Okay, welcome back. In this installment, we're going to have a look at pass plays, and these begin in the same manner as run plays with a, a buzz of the board, uh, and then the quarterback decides whether to uh, hand off or pitch out or lateral or keep it and scramble or throw a downfield pass. And uh, for demonstration purposes here, I've set up a, a five wide formation. It's a uh, third and 12 and Brady is going to air one out here. And uh, the, uh, the Ravens uh, linebackers and linemen are, are going to attempt to blitz and, sa and sack Brady behind the line because they, they can see quite clearly this is going to be uh, a downfield pass. Meanwhile, the defensive backs are in man coverage with all the uh, wide receivers and slot receivers here. So, uh, where to begin? Well, you may recall from episode one, I briefly showed you this chart. And again, uh, you will need a copy of this. So I'm going to hold it up here for a moment just so viewers can pause this and uh, copy this down. Because this is how we determine the difficulty of a pass and whether uh, the pass was complete or incomplete or intercepted. All right. So, and we'll be seeing this a lot in this particular installment. So, prior to the play, during the audible phase, Brady is going to go back and shotgun, and he's going to remain stationary during the first buzz of the board here. And this is a different rule than that from that we discussed in episode or installment two, um, which is that uh, a player that falls or a ball carrier that falls over when the board is buzzing is ruled down. Uh, this is occurring prior to the snap, and this is how we keep the uh, the quarterback in the pocket uh, during the buzz of the board, okay? So that's the exception to the ball carrier falling down rule. He, he didn't fall down. He was placed down, and we'll pick him back up after the after we uh, buzz the, uh, the, the board here for just a moment. So there is no stipulation for how long you can buzz the board uh, before you uh, – throw the ball or run with the ball or whatever you're going to do. Uh, the longer uh, you hold down the switch, the more likely the defense is going to penetrate the line of scrimmage and tackle the quarterback, sack the quarterback for a loss, okay? Uh, regardless of whether he's stationary or just you know, running a route behind the line. Uh, on the other hand, the longer you buzz the board, the more likely one of the eligible receivers is going to get uh, wide open, which could be a good thing. On the other hand, the longer you buzz the board, uh, the further downfield the intent or the eligible receivers will travel, making the difficulty of the power increasing the difficulty of a completion. Okay, so that's all considerations you have to think about. It's it's very risk versus reward when it comes to passes using this method. Now, uh, quick disclaimer, if viewers would rather use the triple threat quarterback to make passes, feel free to, feel free to do so. Uh, it's, uh, the, the procedures are the same other than these dice, uh, this dice roll for uh, a check whether it's complete or incomplete, okay? Much of what we'll be discussing will be irrelevant if you're using the uh, quarterback action figures rather than the dice system. Just keep that in mind. So Brady's gone back and shotgun and called hut hut. And so there's a snap at which point we will do a snap check because he is in shotgun. He's not under center. If this roll is double ones, snake eyes, uh, the ball has been fumbled. Okay. And it's not, it's a roll to 10. So there's a clean snap. Brady now has possession of the ball. He's going to remain stationary. He's going to hang in the pocket while uh, we buzz the board for However long one thinks necessary to find an open receiver, to avoid being sacked, and that sort of thing. So here we go. Very nice uh, uh, pocket there by the uh, Patriots uh, defensive line. So we've got options here. And now the tight end did get caught up on the uh, uh, linebacker. I, gen I generally don't call that as a penalty because uh, about the only way to keep the tight end from being blocked by a linebacker is to angle the linebacker inward and angle the tight end outward, really restricting what the tight end can do. So Brady had all day in the world to make a decision here, and he's got options. Uh, and we'll talk, we're going to use this tight end as an example, though. I'm going to go ahead and put him right here. We'll put him back. We know just to put him right in front of this when we actually run the play. But I'm going to put the tight end right about here, and I'm going to put Brady back up right about here. At this point, uh, we know it's going to be a pass play. We knew that anyway because of the formation, five wide with no, well, he, he could have run with it. He could still run with it. Uh, 
He could still scramble if he wants to, but we're going to attempt to pass, and we're going to look at all the different options. You may recall from uh, episode two, I believe it was, we talked about the different horizontal zones on uh, the, the football field here. Zone one, or A zone, is between the left sideline and the middle of the left numerals. Zone two is between the left numerals and the left hash marks. The third zone is between the hash marks. That's typically where the quarterback's going to be, unless you know the he rolls or, or rolls out this way or that way. And then between the right hash marks and the right numerals is a fourth zone. And then between the right numerals and the uh, right sideline is a fifth zone. And left and right is determined by uh, the perspective of the offense, or more specifically, the quarterback. Okay, so five different zones, and. The whole purpose of the zones is the uh, philosophy that uh, throwing a pass straight forward is less distance than throwing a pass that same um, number of yards, but over here. Okay. In other words, uh, it's a shorter amount of space between the quarterback and the tight end from here to here than it would be if the quarterback was over here to this receiver. It would be several more yards. Ergo, a much more difficult pass. That's where the zones come in. But now we're going to start by using the tight end as an example. The first thing we do is measure the distance between the front of the, of the front most part of the quarterback's base. It could be the back of his base if he's looking backfield and the front most part of the intended receiver's base. In this case, it's a tight end. It happens to be uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, a 25 yard pass attempt. Okay. So, and they're both between the hashes, so there is no modifier for uh, zonal difference or distance, okay? So a 25-yard pass on our uh, chart here falls into this column or this row, and that tells us we need to roll a five or higher on our two six-sided dice for this to be a completed pass. And uh, frankly, if that's where he would have ended up, that would have been a very smart pass. Okay, so we need to roll a five or higher on two six-sided dice, and we rolled an eight, so that is a completion. At this point, all unblocked players pivot. We buzz the board until the uh, uh, ball carrier is either tackled or is knocked over and fumbles or is tackled from behind and fumbles or goes out of bounds or runs to the house or falls over, okay, until the resolution of the play. You buzz the board until the play resolves. And that's how passes work, and that's the most simple explanation. But as you might guess, things are hardly ever that simple, are they? Uh, so we have multiple. This is why I ran a five-wide play here. We have multiple targets. Now, it's unfortunate that 26 and 37 kind of ended up right next to each other, but that does happen. Uh, so what we're going to do is manipulate the, the play just a little bit. We're going to put 37 clearly in this zone and 26 clearly in this zone. Okay, and I'll try to keep the angles the same. And we're okay over here. This looks all right over here. But uh, so suppose Brady instead wants to throw the pass to number 93, who is uh, between the numerals and the hashes rather than between the hashes, the way Brady is. He's one zone over. So we'll count the uh, distance. So 5, 10, 15, eh, 20 yards. Technically, uh, an easier pass uh, it was still, yeah, it would fall in the next category, but he's one zone over. So we look on our chart and we see 20 yards roll a four or higher. On paper, it looks easier than throwing to that tight end in the middle, but because he's one zone over, it's actually a greater distance. So we add one to the difficulty. He has to roll a five or higher, the same as uh, the roll required uh, to pass to the tight end. Okay. In this case, Oh, we only rolled a four. So that's an incomplete pass because it wasn't five or higher, okay? That's how passing works in the EFHL standard rules. There's a lot more to talk about, though. Uh, well, now we'll move to number 11 here. Suppose he is the intended receiver. That's a greater distance. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 20, 27, uh, we'll say 27 yards. It doesn't matter because it falls between 25 and 30. And so on paper, you're going to have to roll between 26 and 30 yards, a six or higher. But this wide receiver is two zones over from the quarterback. 
he's between the numerals and the sideline as opposed to between the hashes. So that's one zone, two zone over. That's going to add two to the difficulty. It's a plus two modifier. So you're going to have to roll an eight or higher to uh, pass to uh, to make a completion to that particular uh, receiver. There's actually a further modifier. We'll talk about in just a few moments here, but just play each of these out, okay? Rolled a seven, so that's an incomplete pass, okay? Now, further downfield here, we've moved number 26 for a better demonstration. Let's see, that's about the, I don't know, 47 and a half yard line. We'll call it the 47. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36 yard pass. And he's one zone over from uh, the quarterback. So 36 to 40 is roll eight or higher, but we're going to add plus one to the difficulty. So we'd have to roll a nine or higher for that to be a complete pass much more difficult to roll a 9, a 10, or 11, or 12 than it is to roll uh, a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. You understand? So, Brady attempting the pass to number 26 would look like uh, I rolled, ooh, an 8, almost a completion, but he dropped it. So it, it's an incompletion. Distance makes the passes more difficult. Now, sometimes you'll get lucky, <laughs> and that will be a beautiful completion. Number 37 here is, uh, well, let's say this is 37 yards. Uh, that would be 38 yards. So that's still, well, now let's measure it again. Um, we use the uh, uh, hash marks over here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 30. Yeah, 37 yards, which would normally be roll an 8 or higher on this chart, which uh, hopefully viewers have copied down. But he is two zones away from Brady here. Brady's in the zone between the hashes. There's this zone. That's one zone. And number 37 is in this zone. So that's two. So he's going to have to roll a 10 or higher to make this completion. And we'll play it out. Oh, he only rolled a six. So that's an incompletion. So as you can see, it's easier to make a completion, the closer it is, the re intended receiver is to the quarterback. Let's move 81 again. And let's actually put him uh, even closer. So 5, 10, 15 yard pass. And we won't have any modifiers on that because he's technically in the same zone. I only need to roll a 3 or higher for number 81 to catch this pass. Okay. And I rolled a 6. That would be in completion. All unblocked players pivot. Buzz the board until the play resolves, okay? But that's not what happened. We're going to put the tight end back here because that's where he was. Uh, now, there's a lot more we need to talk about here as far as uh, interceptions um, and modifiers for difficulty. But before we get into that, let's talk about what happens if you attempt to pass between 1 and 10 yards, a forward pass between 1 or 10 yards. Now, let's face it, uh, a backwards pass 1 yard is a handoff, right? Um as you can see on our chart here, 1 to 10 yards, there is no target number. It's automatic. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a completion. But let's say this tight end uh, came back to about right here to take a little shovel pass here from Brady. Okay, so we don't, we're not rolling to see whether it's complete. We're rolling to see whether he fumbles it or whether he drops it. Okay, and the only time that's going to happen on a shovel pass is if you roll snake eyes. Remember, rolling double ones is bad. Always bad, okay? And I rolled a six, so it would be a completion. All unblocked players pivot, and there's really nothing he can do here. He would get blocked by this, uh, uh, probably, unless he just outruns that linebacker and, and swoops around and heads downfield. Uh, but that's another eventuality. So one to 10 yard forward pass, just roll to see if, if the ball is incomplete. Uh, not the distance really doesn't into it. It's such a close pass. You you don't have to roll. Well, you technically do have to roll a three or higher. Uh, but if you roll the snake eyes, it is incomplete. Okay. So let's put him back here now. And now I think we should talk about a few of the different modifiers that would make this, these passes easier or more difficult. Okay. So let's see. Well, let's talk defensive pressure first. Suppose the quarterback is within five yards 
and he may already be. Let me uh, let me grab the card here that has five yards. Uh, just check these. No, okay. So we, what we need to do is we need to put a defender in his face, basically. There's, there's about there's exactly five yards, and I'm measuring from helmet to helmet here. Okay. Uh, so. And that's clearly defensive pressure right there. This is going to add difficulty to a pass. So uh, we'll use 83 as an example again. Um, so 5, 10, 15, a 20-yard pass, which would be roll 4 or higher. The target number is 4. He's one zone over. That bumps it up to 5. The quarterback is under defensive pressure. That bumps it up to 6. It's more difficult to complete a pass when you've got a defender in your face like that, okay? This is a this was inspired by the defensive pressure sticks from the passing sticks we use in the advanced EFHL. This adds a lot of depth and realism to the game. So I got to roll a six or higher now to make a completion to number eighty three there, and we rolled a seven. So this, despite the adversity, despite the distance and uh, a defender in their face, Tom Brady makes a completion uh, to number eighty three there. All unblocked players pivots, resolve the play, okay? What are some other modifiers uh, we can apply here? Ah, if there are two or more defenders within five yards of the intended receiver, uh, you're going to add one to the difficulty of a pass. And I think let's... Okay, well, there's one within... With how, how many yards did I put? Five yards, okay. Uh, so, again, let's do this. And again, we're, we're totally manipulating this play here. Uh, so in this case, if we're throwing to number 26, now we're getting cumulative modifiers, and these are all cumulative, okay? So uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 32 yard pass with a zone differential of one. So that would normally be a roll of seven or higher, but the zone differential makes it an eight. Quarterback is under defensive pressure. He now bumps it up to nine. There are two defenders within five yards of the intended receiver. That bumps it up to 10. You got to roll a 10 or higher. And, oh, I rolled a five, which is half the target number. Had it been a four, there would be consequences. It would be an interception. I'll explain that in a few moments. Let's see. Um, now, they're not all uh, uh, adverse modifiers. You can get positive modifiers as well. Let's see. If there's no defender within 10 yards of the receiver, he's wide open, and you would subtract one from the difficulty. So let's uh, put the – whoops, that's Brady. Where was he on the – 11. Where's that tied in? We'll put him about right here and we'll measure it to make sure there's no one within 10 yards of him. Uh, yep, he's outside 10 yards. In fact, we can put him back just a little. Uh, helmet to helmet is what we're uh, measuring here for these uh, distances. So Brady is under defensive pressure. We're in the same zone. So it's a 5, a five 10, 15, 20, 25. 30. We'll say it's a 30-yard pass, which under the best circumstances would need to roll us. The target number would be six or higher. Brady is still under defensive pressure, so we'll make that a seven. However, number 81 is wide open, so he gets uh, a modifier that make it easier, so we bump it back to uh, six, as if Brady weren't under defensive pressure, okay? So we'll play that out. He rolls a seven. That's a completion. Uh, all unblocked players pivot, resolve the play. Um, I had considered uh, adding in a rule that if the quarterback is 10 yards away from all defenders, he would also get a bonus. But no, we need the quarterback is, is, is on a professional football team because he's a very good passer. Okay, so that's a... Uh, the, the pressure is when things begin to, to fall apart for him. So he's he's always got that modifier. Uh, the That's why I didn't pad it into the rules here. Okay, now the red zone. If the ball were going the other way. Now let's just, if uh, the Patriots had advanced the ball to the 20, if the line of scrimmage is the 20 or closer 
to the uh, to the goal line. There's the red zone uh, uh, modifier, which is a plus one difficulty to the pass itself. Uh, That's uh, similar to defensive pressure. You're in the red zone. Passes are more difficult in the red zone. And that's cumulative with everything else. You could have a play where there's defensive pressure, where the um, uh, intended receiver has two defenders within five yards and within the red zone. That's And you're, you're a few zones over. I mean, you can... You can make this a very, very difficult pass under all those circumstances, okay? That's things to consider here. So let's review. If the result of the dice roll is equal to or greater than the modified target number, uh, the pass is complete. If the result of the dice roll is less than the modified target number, the pass is incomplete. If the result of the dice roll is less than half the modified target number, and there is um, a defender within five yards of the intended receiver, uh, that defender has intercepted the pass. All unblocked players pivot and buzz the board until the play resolves. Uh, you can, you know, it can easily become a pick six in a situation like that. The defense becomes the offense, in other words, okay? And um, let me show you some examples of that here on our chart. So if the target number is 10 and the result... Is, or the modified target number is 10, and the result on the dice roll is 4. That's less than one half of 10, resulting in a potential interception if there is a, uh, a defender within 5 yards uh, in a 360-degree circle or from the uh, uh, intended receiver. Now, if there is not a defender within 5 yards, it's an incompletion. Okay? Uh, so if the, the target number is 12 and you roll a 5, or less, it's uh, an interception if there is a defender close enough. Now, as far as odd numbers, well, half of nine is four and a half. So if you roll a four, that's an interception. Uh, Half of 11, I believe, is five and a half. So if you roll a five or less, that's an interception. Okay, so there's how you get uh, all these different uh, realistic modifiers Uh, to these dice rolls here. Now, what happens if you roll snake eyes? I mean, surely that's bad uh, because snake eyes is bad any other time in this game, correct? You're absolutely right. If the passing dice roll is double ones, snake eyes, the pass is wildly uh, off target and any unblocked defender within 15 yards of the intended receiver intercepts the ball and that's the uh, defense's choice uh, if there are multiple defenders within 15 yards. In fact, it's also the defense's choice in this situation. If this had been an interception, you, it's up to the defense who uh, intercepts that pass. I don't know which one would be probably number four and hope he could outrun both uh, defenders there or both wide receivers there. But yeah, if you roll snake eyes uh, and there is a, a defender within 15 yards of the intended receiver, then the defender is intercepted. That allows, sometimes that allows linemen to intercept the pass or linebackers. That happens all the time in real football. So I I was more than happy uh, to put that in these rules. Now, please note, I did say unblocked, okay? Unblocked defender. Uh, If the defender is blocked, he can't intercept a pass, okay? And if there are no defenders around to intercept that snake eyes uh, interception, then it's simply an incompletion, okay? Now, I want to mention this as well. A roll of 12 on the two six-sided dice is always a completion. This allows Hail Mary passes, okay? Regardless of the distance, if you roll a natural 12 on the dice, uh, it is a completion. And again, you can buzz the board as long as you want to, as long as the quarterback doesn't fade back more than 20 yards and doesn't go out of bounds. Now, if he crosses the line of scrimmage, uh, he can't throw a pass, obviously. that's Those are the rules of football. At that point, you just have to bump the board and resolve the play like it were a run play or a quarterback keeper, all right? And now I've been using the word eligible receiver quite a bit uh, in this particular installment. Uh, all wide receivers and slot receivers are eligible receivers and the tight end and the running backs. Uh, the, the line of scrimmage, the uh, the center, the guards, and the tackles are ineligible receivers. You cannot pass to them if you uh, attempt to do so. That is a penalty. And um, 
unlike with the triple threat quarterback or a passing action figure, uh, using this system, there's really no danger of accidentally hitting an ineligible receiver with the ball uh, in a pass attempt. But you cannot uh, call one of those five uh, individuals an intended receiver. All the other uh, uh, players on the offense are eligible, unless the tight end is blocking rather than an eligible receiver. And, and the way I play, unless I say otherwise, the tight end is always eligible. Uh, unless before the play I say the tight end is going to block on this play, at which point he could not catch a pass, okay? Now, are there other modifiers to these difficulty numbers we could add into the game? Well, certainly. There's quite a few. Lots of stuff from the advanced EFHL rule system uh, could apply to this as well, including weather conditions. If it's snowing, obviously, that would be a, a penalty to the difficulty of, of a pass. Um, if you're using the player rating system from the advanced rules, a quarterback with a, a high enough player rating would get uh, a nice bonus or a reduction to the difficulty of, of every pass. But those examples are uh, beyond the scope of the standard EFHL rules. Those are all a part of the advanced rules. Feel free to use those if you want to. And the last thing here before we resolve this play, uh, at this stage, the quarterback still has the option of scrambling and running with the ball and attempting to uh, gain positive yardage. Just keep that in mind as well. He, just, just because you stopped the, uh, the board, you have not committed to the pass until you roll the dice. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that now. Remember, we did manipulate some of these figures. Let's put the tight end back where he was. I don't want to make this too easy. Uh, he's out of this play. He's all that's keeping this lineman from making a play on Brady. We'll put all these modifiers into play. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll roll the dice until we make a completion here, and then we'll try to resolve the play and see what happens. I uh, I don't know who at this stage. 37 is the tastiest target because he might outrun 4 and 86 and, and take it to the house. Uh, 11 is pretty well covered. Honestly, 90 or 83 is also pretty well covered. Um, <laughs> if this wasn't uh, a pass play demonstration video... I would probably elect to scramble and go through this hole right there. That would probably be the best course of action. But at this point, uh, we will uh, attempt to pass, I think, to uh, number 90, or 83 here. And we'll go through this whole rigmarole again. 5, 10, 15, 20-yard pass. Uh, there's defensive pressure, and he's one zone over. So we grab our chart, and eventually I'll have this memorized. So 20 would normally be a 4 or higher. We have two modifiers to make this a 6 or higher. Brady's going to have to roll a 6 or higher on the dice to make this completion to number 83 here. And he rolled a 7, so that's going to be a completion. And now at this stage, all unblocked players pivot, and we resolve the play. I'm actually loath to move. 83 that much. I'm headed to the sideline to try to stay away. Uh, I just need to get to the 32-yard line, and frankly, we're almost there. This is going to be a first down, uh, but I'm going to try to pick up as many positive yards as I can. Number 12 is probably going to make the tackle, but I don't want to, you don't want to point him straight at the uh, ball carrier because the ball carrier is not going to be there. You're going to miss this tackle if you do that. You're going to want to point him about right there to try to make the tackle. 88 is going to try to make the tackle as well, but number 11 is going to prevent that. And at this point, this is all moot over here. I'm just going to allow them to keep going the way they're going. We really don't need to do any more unblocked player or unblocked pivots. I would want to to avoid a penalty, roughing the passer, if we're going to fool with those, uh, get him out of the way. So number 83 there is the ball carrier. And at this stage, we buzz the board until the play resolves. Okay, so here we go. And uh, we'll roll dice in a moment to see if he was down back here at the 37. But, yeah, it looks like out at about the 49-yard line. Uh, I'm not entirely sure he wasn't tackled uh, by number 12 there. So uh, if this dice roll comes up as an odd number, he was tackled back there at the uh, 42 if it's an even number, he made it to the 49, okay? It's an even number, so we'll mark him down. He went out of bounds at the 49-yard line, first down, New England, okay? Now, it's possible number 12 tackled him, but it, I just, it wasn't clean enough for me to see from 
this side of the board. If I'd have been over there and probably on camera, it was probably readily apparent, but I don't have the luxury of instant replay, and you might not either in your own gameplay. So that's it, folks. That's the gist of pass plays. And um, it took me about half an hour. That's about how long I th- thought it would take me to explain these. Of course, a typical pl- pass play is only going to be about 25 seconds, you know, from start to finish. So let's do a recap. Uh, buzz the board for as long as you think is necessary to, f- to get a nice open eligible receiver. Uh, you do run the risk of being sacked the longer you hold down and the more d- challenging the pass will be the further away you get from the quarterback Uh, pick an eligible receiver uh, determine the target number by looking at the distance applying modifiers for the different zones and all the different uh, modifiers that can come into play like defensive pressure or coverage by uh, two or more defenders or whether you're in the red zone, or conversely, whether the uh, eligible receiver is wide open and actually gets a bonus and a a less difficult pass. Roll the dice if the result is equal to or higher than the target number, the modified target number, the pass is complete. All unblocked players pivot, including uh, the receiver. Uh, Buzz the board until the play resolves. If the the dice roll is is less than the target number it's an incompletion however if the dice roll is less than half the target number and there is a defender within five yards of that receiver uh, the defender has intercepted the pass all unblocked players pivot buzz the board until the play resolves if the roll is snake eyes uh, the pass has gone wildly off course and uh, any uh, defender within 15 yards of the receiver may intercept the pass All unblocked players pivot, buzz the board until the play resolves. A roll of 12 is always a completion. So if this were the final play of the game and Brady just stayed back in this pocket as long as he could right here on the 20 and uh, number 37 down here, we'll put him in the end zone and we'll call that an 80 yard pass. Well, it doesn't matter. It's more than 56 yards. The only way... That's going to be a completion as we, we rolled double sixes on the die. And we rolled a nine. The game's over. Uh, uh, Ravens win in this eventuality. Uh, rolling 12 is is not easy, but it does happen. You roll snake guys a lot and you roll 12s a lot. Um, but that always gives you a chance for success because a rolling a 12 is always a completion no matter what. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's passing using the uh, EFHL standard rule system in a 30-minute nutshell. Now, again, if if you're adamant on using the triple threat quarterback or your passing action figure of choice rather than this passing system, feel free to do so. The game plays exactly the same. Um, But when you get tired of never being able to complete a pass with those crappy triple threat quarterbacks, then, you know, this will always be here for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. In the next installment, we'll have a look at punting. See you then.